On Filling an Inkwell from Mince Pie by Christopher Morley, 1919. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. On Filling an Inkwell by Christopher Morley. Those who buy their ink in little stone jugs may prefer to do so because the pottle reminds them of Kruskeen lawn or ginger beer, with its wire-bound cork, but they miss a noble delight. Ink should be bought in the tall blue glass quart bottle with the ingenious non-drip spout, and once every three weeks or so, when you fill your ink well, it is your privilege to elevate the flask against the brightness of a window, and meditate, with a breath of sadness, on the joys and problems that sacred fluid holds in solution. How blue it shines toward the light! Blue as lupin or larkspur or cornflower, Ay, and even so blue art thou, my scriven, to think how far the written page falls short of the bright ecstasy of thy dream. In the bottle what magnificence of unpenned stuff lies cool and liquid, what fluency of essay, what fonts of song. As the bottle glints, blue as a squill or a hyacinth, blue as the meadows of Elysium or the eyes of girls loved by young poets, me seems the racing pen might also gain upon the thoughts that are turning the bend in the road. A jolly throng, those thoughts. I can see them talking and laughing together. But when pen reaches the road's turning, the thoughts are far gone ahead. Their delicate figures are silhouettes against the sky. It is a sacramental matter, this filling the ink well. Is there a writer, however humble, who has not poured into his writing pot with the ink some wistful hopes or prayers for what may emerge from that dark source? Is there not some particular reverence due the ink well, some form of propitiation to humbug the powers of evil and constraint that devil, the journalist? Satan hovers near the ink pot. Luther solved the matter by throwing the well itself at the apparition. That savors to me too much of homeopathy. If Satan ever puts his face over my desk, I shall hurl a volume of Harold Bell right at him. But what becomes of the ink pots of glory? The conduit from which Boswell drew for Charles Dilly in The Poultry, the great river of his Johnson? The well, was it of blue china? Whence flowed dream children a reverie? It was written on folio ledger sheets from the East India House. I saw the manuscript only yesterday in a room at Dalesford, Pennsylvania, where much of the richest ink of the last two centuries is lovingly laid away. The pot of chuckling fluid where Harry Fielding dipped his pen to tell the history of a certain foundling. The inkwells of the Café de la Source on the Boule Miche. Do they by any chance remember which it was that RLS used? One of the happiest tremors of my life was when I went to that café and called for a Bach and writing material, just because R.L.S. had once written letters there. And the inkwell Poe used at that boarding house in Greenwich Street, New York, April 1844, when he wrote to his dear Moody, his mother-in-law, to describe how he and Virginia had reached a haven of square meals. That hopeful letter, so perfect now in pathos, quote, for breakfast we had excellent flavored coffee, hot and strong, not very clear, and no great deal of cream. Veal cutlets, elegant ham and eggs, and nice bread and butter. I never sat down to a more plentiful or a nicer breakfast. I wish you could have seen the eggs, the great dishes of meat. Sis, his wife, is delighted, and we are both in excellent spirits. She has coughed hardly any and had no night sweat. She is now busy mending my pants, which I tore against a nail. I went out last night and bought a skein of silk, a skein of thread, two buttons, a pair of slippers, and a tin pan for the stove. The fire kept in all night. We have now got four dollars and a half left. Tomorrow I am going to try and borrow three dollars so that I may have a fortnight to go upon. I feel in excellent spirits and haven't drank a drop, so that I hope soon to get out of trouble." Unquote. Yes, let us clear the typewriter off the table. An inkwell is a sacred thing. Do you ever stop to think, when you see the grimy, spattered desks of a public post office, how many eager or puzzled human hearts have tried, in those dingy little ink cups, to set themselves right with fortune? 
what blissful meetings have been appointed with scribblings of pain and sorrow out of those founts of common speech and the inkwells on hotel counters does not the public dipping place of the bellevue hotel boston win a new dignity in my memory when i know as i learned lately that rupert brooke registered there in the spring of nineteen fourteen i remember too a certain pleasant vibration when signing my name one day in the bellevue's book i found miss agnes Replier's autograph a little above on the same page among our younger friends Vachel Lindsay comes to mind as one who has done honor to the inkwell. His apology for the bottle volcanic is in his best flow of secret smiling, save an unfortunate dilution of Riley. Sometimes I dip my pen and find the bottle full of fire. The salamanders flying forth I cannot but admire. O oh, sad deceiving ink, as bad as liquor in its way, all demons of a bottle size have pranced from you to-day and seized my pen for hobby-horse as witches ride a broom, and left a trail of brimstone words and blots and gobs of gloom. And yet, when I am extra good, here I omit the transfusion of Riley. My bottle spreads a rainbow mist, and from the vapor fine, ten thousand troops from fairyland come riding in a line. I suppose it is the mark of a trifling mind, yet I like to hear of the little particulars that surrounded those whose pens struck sparks. It is Boswell that leads us into that habit of thought. I like to know what the author wore, how he sat, what the furniture of his desk and chamber, who cooked his meals for him, and with what appetite he approached them. The mind soars by an effort to the grand and lofty. So dipped Hazlitt in some favored ink-bottle. It is at home in the groveling, the disagreeable, and the little. I like to think, as I look along bookshelves, that every one of these favorites was born out of an inkwell. I imagine the hopes and visions that thronged the author's mind as he filled his pot and sliced the quill. What various fruits have flowed from those inkwells of the past? For some, comfort and honor, quiet homes and plenteousness. For others, bitterness and disappointment. I have seen a copy of Poe's poems published in 1845 by Putnam, inscribed by the author. The volume had been bought for $2,500. Think what that would have meant to Poe himself. Some such thoughts as these twinkled in my head as I held up the Pierian bottle against the light, admired the deep blue of it, and filled my inkwell. And then I took up my pen, which wrote, A Grace Before Writing. On filling an inkwell, this is a sacrament, I think, holding the bottle toward the light, as blue as lupin gleams the ink, may truth be with me as I write. That small dark cistern may afford reunion with some vanished friend, and with this ink I have just poured, may none but honest words be penned. End of On Filling an Inkwell Recording by Lee Smalley